This is a, a toilet roll holder made from a towel. It looks like a, like a bag, but when I turn it to the side, you'll see that I haven't sewn up the sides, and I've actually stored three toilet rolls inside that. I could probably fit four, or if I made it longer, maybe five or six, or however many you want to store. Um, I've just made mine from toweling. You could choose a different fabric if you like, but I just think toweling is so inexpensive, and it kind of matches the theme of the bedroom. So, let me show you how I made it. On one of my previous uh, videos, I showed you how to make these little um, folded triangles to decorate a towel with. Um, I've done exactly the same but larger on the towel that I'm going to use for the toilet roll holder. And this is it. Um, so I've used a dark red satin and I've trimmed it off with some cord and I've just um, embroidered on a piece of ribbon because I found some of the same colour and uh, put that across the top. Then I cut the side pieces off my towel but not the top piece. And uh, the measurements are, oh, let's do it in inches, um, 18 inches, so that's 36 inches for the whole strip, which is uh, obviously a yard. And across wise, it's not an exact science, but that's about 11 and a half or 12 inches. Um, just be warned that uh, this frays like mad, so kind of expect little white bits all over the place. Now you might have noticed I've got some pencils stuck in the top. And there is method in my madness. Um, the top of the towel is already folded over and I want eventually to thread a cord through the end bit which means that I'm going to leave a raw edge around the hole. So I put some glue, just you know, fabric glue, uh, a wet glue around the edge to stop it fraying but I didn't want the hole to join together so I just stuck some pencils in the end while I waited for it to dry. That's all dry now so that can come out. So I found some bias binding of practically the same colour and I'm just going to apply that all the way down both of the sides, avoiding that top bit because remember I want to uh, whoops, um, I want to leave that open. So I'm going to cut the bias flat and take that all the way down. And I've only decorated one side of the tail because this is eventually going to hang up against uh, a door or a wall so there's, there's no need to decorate both sides. If you want to, you can do. So I'll fold over the end of my bias. I use an awful lot of this, it's really useful and it helps to neaten off the edge of, of anything really. Um, I'm going to apply it on the back because I want the front section to be really neat. I've just got a few extra bits of gluey toweling there to snip off and start just below that loop and I'm going to stitch that on following the crease line. So I'll back tap right at the top and I'm going to stitch all the way down both sides first of all. Just along the iron mark. That's quite thick so a longer stitch would be better because uh, the, the towel is uh, obviously very junky. Um, and take it slowly if you're not too sure. Um, and you can always pin that in place before you sit, stitch it just to make sure that you're accurately sewing down that line. So I've stitched all the way down the side. Um, and because, again, the toweling is really bulky, when I fold that over, there's too much toweling in the centre. So I'm going to cut away, this is going to get very fluffy, all of that excess toweling quite close up to the um, the seam mark, the stitch mark without obviously cutting through it it'll stop being messy once I've finished sewing it in and then the reason I've sewn it on the reverse side instead of the front side is because I want to top stitch this. Okay. So that's the back side. And then as I turn that over onto the right side, that's the side that I'm going to see. And I'm top stitching on the machine, so it'll leave a neater line than if I was trying to gauge that from sewing the other way. Um, if you're sewing by hand, if you're doing a slip stitch to finish that off, I would have sewn this on the top side, the bit you do see, and then hand stitch that on the underside. But for speed's sake, I'm doing it this way. So again, I'm going to take it quite slowly. I folded over the end bits of my bias tape, so that makes a nice neat edge. 
You could pin that again if it makes it easier, but for speed's sake I shan't. And then I'm just going to top stitch. Now if you've got embroidery stitches on your machine, you could um, do maybe a zigzag or a fancy stitch. But I'm just going to stitch straight. And I've got the same colour thread, so you shouldn't see that on top of the fabric. So if it doesn't go quite right, then um, if I don't say in quite a straight line, it's not so important if your thread's in the same colour. So I'm going to go all the way down this side. This is on the top side, remember. Then I do exactly the same to the other side. So just take the stitches right down to the end. Fold over the end of the bias tape again to make it nice and neat. When you get to the end, just back tack a couple of stitches just so it doesn't come undone. And then I'm going to cut the thread off and neaten that up. Now all of the fraying bits on the toweling have been encapsulated but there are going to be some loose bits so give it a good old shake and you'll be covered in snow but that's the last time it's going to shed. There we go. So that's my toilet roll holder so far. So I've got my decorated side on the one side and then I put bias tape all the way down the other two sides. I'll just neaten off my dreadful for loose threads, my threads. So the next thing to do is to put the cord through the top. Now I've got some cord which is the same colour. If you don't but you have some um, piping tape uh, or binding you can use that. And I've cut a couple of pieces around about, let me measure those for you. Have them longer or shorter that's up to you but mine measure about 31 inches in length. Always better to cut longer so you can cut them shorter if you need to. And I'm simply going to thread these through that loop that I left at the top. So I put a safety pin on the end, pull that through, and thread through. And then I'll do the same on the other side, and this will make the handles. Um, if you wanted to make this a bit stiffer, if you had some very fine doweling um, around about the thickness of a pencil, you could always thread that through and then put your cording just on the end so it keeps it straight. But mine's going to be gathered. So I'll do the other side and gather it up. I want to make a loop out of these, so I'm going to tie them in a knot. If you wanted that to be hidden and invisible, then I would sew the two pieces together and then re-pull them back through um, your towel. So in other words, if I sewed them together so they were flat, I could pull them back through this way so that they, the stitch marks hidden underneath, but I don't mind seeing the knot, so um, I'm going to leave them exposed. Um, and I'm just going to fred, uh, fray the end just slightly and trim off the excess so it looks like a tassel on the top. And this would work just as well with your, with your piping or most cords. Oh, that fray is lovely. Papato. And I've practically finished. So if I gather these up a little bit, Like so. Try and keep the knot in the centre. You can always shuffle, shuffle it around. That one's not quite. If it's not. And then with the measurements that I had, I can comfortably fit in here three toilet rolls, maybe even four. So they sit in the middle like this. four or five in there but 
think three is okay. And because it gathers at the top, it just seems to hold them in place. So it looks like a little wash bag. And you can hang that at the back of the door. Um, and it keeps your toilet rolls nice and neat and out of the way and, and not visible if you have um, if you have guests coming round to the house. Now I've got some more ideas for you as well, kind of on a similar theme. So that's the uh, the toilet roll holder. I'll just pop that on the back of my chair. I've decorated another towel using the same same technique. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I've just put some embroidery stitches across the bottom of the towel there. But then I've made a matching bag, and again, this is just using towels. And I'm using towels because they are so cheap to buy. So buy them plain white, and then you can embellish them and decorate them however you like. So with the bag, this could be a laundry bag or somewhere to keep your shampoos. I folded the towel in half again, and then I just stitched down the side. There's no need to trim any off the towel that I had of this size. I put my fancy bits all the way around the top. That could just be ribbon or um, embroidery stitches. Then I stitched a piece of ribbon on each side. Now I left the ends open. So one piece of ribbon on the front, fold the end over. One piece of ribbon on the back, fold the end over. And then I threaded two pieces of cord through so that when you pull them through those holes at the end, it draws up and then you've got a, a drawstring bag. So it's another take on decorating your bathroom just using towels. But of course these don't have to be just from towels. If you wanted to make your toilet roll holder from fabric, um, what I would do then would be to um, pad it, make it look a little bit more luxurious. Still keep the bias binding on the edges because I think that's a nice finishing touch. Um, and you could use rope or coloured cord. You could decorate that maybe by putting some applique or initials would look rather nice as a gift as well. But that's just one idea, how to decorate your bathroom and store your toilet rolls.